Church. Come on, can we just pause for a moment and pray for the All Blacks? <laughs> it's good to have you church this morning. If you're here with kids this morning, primary school age and intermediate age, we've got programs on for you. The Voltage team's on the back. Uh, Barbie's down the back with the kids team going. Having an awesome morning. Why don't you turn around and say hi to someone this morning. Go welcome someone to the church. So good to have you. Make a new friend. Go meet someone you haven't met before. Come on, we're going to continue to praise and worship our God this morning. Come on.
great are you? Church, many of us sing that song, and that is, to me, one of the most beautiful songs to sing. Just the incredible grace that I found in Jesus, the love I found in God, the, the freedom, the hope I found when I met Jesus. And uh, I know many of us here today, we've got loved ones, family members, friends that, that aren't walking with God, they don't know Jesus, they don't know the Lord, and maybe even praying for them for a long, long time, maybe years and years and years, or the close to your heart, you know, one of my greatest desires of my heart when I first met God was that my family would know Him too. And uh, we're called this Sunday, Prodigal Sunday, for a reason, because I really believe, you know, like, we want to stand with you as you pray for your lost loved ones. We want to, you know, like, often you feel like you're just doing it on your own, praying for that person, praying for that person. And, you know, the Bible says that where there's unity, God commands blessing, but it also says there are two or more gather and ask anything in His name, it will be done. And uh, I really believe today we want to join with you to pray for those in your world that are far from God, that you want, to know, you want them to come to know Jesus in a radical, real, life-changing, life-altering, eternity-shaping way, just like I met Him. And uh, so on your seat, there is this little form, this little flyer. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to find yourself a pen. If you don't have one, there'll probably be a lady's handbag near you. And... Um, <laughs> 
you have my permission to go into that deck. No, I'm just kidding. They always got a pen in there. Failing pens, there's lipstick, mascara, they all write perfectly. So grab a pen real quick. And uh, here's what I want you to do. Uh, you can remain standing if you want to. If you want to need to sit down while you write, that's okay. What we're going to do is, is uh, I want you to write the name, names, multiple. It doesn't matter what you want to do. I want you to write the names of loved ones you want us to pray for this morning. And uh, once you've done that, I want you to take a moment. We've been just going to keep worshipping. And uh, right down here, we've got the cross set up this morning. And uh, there's some baskets here down at the foot of the cross here. I want you to take that piece of paper and I want you to pop it in that basket and then go back to your seat and then stand up and sing along with the band because we want to take a moment and uh, just a few seconds to pray for every name that is in that basket. So don't dawdle, don't delay, write it on this piece of paper and then make your way up and chuck them in that basket. They would love to just take a moment to pray for all those things. So you go for it. For my part in this I see Nothing but the blood of Jesus For my cleansing this my plea Nothing but the blood of Jesus Oh precious Come and just pray over every request there. If you put a name in there, I want you to lift your hands and agree with uh, Hugh's prayer right now. Heavenly Father, 
We bring these people to you, Lord God. They're precious to all of us, Lord, but we know that they're also precious to you, Father. They're so precious to you that you know them better than we do, Lord, and that you care for them better than we do, Lord, and that you love them better than we do too, Lord. And Father, we just ask that you'll speak to them this morning uh, and in the days to come. Father, just break through in whatever area that they're uh, concerned about or, uh, or argumentative about, Lord. And Father, that just you will reveal yourself to them, Father, in a new and a perfect way so that they come to know you as we have known you, Lord, as, as we know you now. And Father, we ask of all of this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Hallelujah. You want to just, just remain standing. We're going to do a. Uh, we're going to take communion together as well. The team's going to come. Just remain standing in this attitude of worship this morning. You know, those uh, as the team come and just hand those out. They're, those names are not going to. That's not the only time we're going to pray for them. Those are going to go to our prayer team, our intercessors team. We're going to keep praying for them individually, name by name, throughout the rest of this week and the weeks to come. All right. So we don't want to just stop there. We want to keep believing with you. So whatever name you put in there, can I? encourage you pray for that person what for one minute once a day every day pray for them one minute once a day every day and we're going to pray for them as well uh, every day for the next few weeks and just believe god for miracles in people's lives you know as we do that as we pray for those people you know it's not about us at all it's not about our efforts or our trying our striving it's not as if uh, you know we make anything happen it's all about the blood of jesus and, and we, as we take communion together this morning, we're reminded again that we're bringing these names to the foot of the cross. We're bringing everything of us. We bring it back to the cross, back to Jesus. It's because of His blood shed and His body broken on that cross that we can even petition God, that we can even bring names to God. It's, it's because of His body broken and His blood shed that we even know God in the first instance, that we can even pray for somebody else to know Him. It's not about our own perfection or our own religious good deeds. It's not about our own efforts, our own good things that we do. None of that, none of that matches up. None of that makes us right. It's about the precious blood of Jesus that he shed on that cross over 2,000 years ago. That whoever receives what he did on that cross receives God's grace, free gift of grace. And I want us to remember that this morning. I want us to remember that, hey friends, you might have lost all the ones, you have people far from God. It's not about you trying to do anything, it's about everything Jesus has already done. He already holds the victory, you already won it on the cross, you already paid the ultimate price. You don't have to be a sacrifice for them. Jesus was the ultimate, perfect sacrifice. So trust in Him this morning. Place your faith back in Him, place your hope back in Jesus this morning. His finished work of the cross. It's, there's no addition to it. It's not finished and then you have to do some more. No, no, finished, it's finished. Once you finish a race, the race is over. It's done. But Jesus hung on that cross. He didn't say it's finished, but there's still a few more things to do. No, 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 it's finished. No more trying, no more striving, no more trying to keep a law. No, no more trying to be perfect. No more trying to be righteous in God's eyes. No, no, you're righteous because of Jesus. You're righteous because of the cross. You're righteous because of his blood shed and his body broken for you. And uh, let me pray and let's just eat and drink together this morning, church. Father, I thank you so much for your grace. We remember this morning the cross on which you died. But you took on you, on that cross the sin of the world, the punishment that we owe. The, you paid the ransom for our lives with your body and broken your bloodshed. And this morning, Lord, we remember that. It's not about our efforts, our trying, our striving. It's about what you've already done, the victory you've already won. And we receive that free gift of grace this morning in Jesus' name. Let's just eat and drink together this morning. Father, we thank you again for your grace. We thank you again for your body broken, your bloodshed. Not only to free us from the traps of sin and death, but Lord, to, to heal us, to set us free. And Father, right now I just uh, lift up young Moston, like right now I've got a young uh, boy, his family's in our church here, he's in ICU in Auckland Hospital right now. 
And we just command the precious blood of Jesus over that boy. He's having a fight. He's having a battle. We stand with that family this morning. We ask in Jesus' name for a miracle. We ask for healing right now. We command healing right now in Jesus' name. We tell his body to be well, to any virus or infection to go right now in Jesus' name. We just command healing into that body. And I pray that same prayer over anyone in this place who is suffering from sickness or illness. I pray that over them right now in the awesome name of Jesus. Everyone said amen. amen. Come on, if you believe to say amen. amen. Awesome. Hey, so good to have you in church this morning. Why don't you grab a seat? If you came in late this morning uh, and you've got kids, we've got a great kids program on for you right now. Uh, one of the teams down the back is at Lee. Lee's down the back. He's waving his hand. If you've got kids primary school age or intermediate age or even under fives, Lee is down the back for you. Uh, that'd be great. He'll show you where you need to go. Also, if you're here and you've got little, little ones, we do have a parents' room just off the foyer. The service is being live into that so you don't have to miss anything. You can catch up <coughs> with everything that's going on. So the All Blacks kick off in about... Uh, 40, 15 minutes or so and uh, someone said what happened are we praying for them because they lost don't speak that evil out in here I rebuke that get behind me I'm just playing hey we want to celebrate this morning uh, if you've had something great going on in your life oh actually no first I want to do is I want to welcome visitors yeah if you're here with us for the first time this morning maybe you're a visitor you've come here with a family member or a friend we love to welcome you thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to come and hang out with us uh, we hope you got yourself a free coffee this morning, but if you missed out on that, we'd love to invite you, if you are a guest, to our guest lounge in the foyer. It's the couch area. Uh, there's a team there would love to host you, give you a coffee and a muffin. Hopefully one of our team has spotted you and given you a welcome pack. There's some info on the church, a little card you can fill in just to give us your details so we can connect with you and let you know what's going on in the life of the church, if you'd like to do that. We would love to see you at the guest lounge. All right, country time. If you've had something special go on, a birthday, wedding anniversary, special event, come on up the ante with me. We're going to celebrate with some crunchy. So come on, don't be shy. We'd love to celebrate with you. Lynn, what are you celebrating this morning? You're having your fourth daughter. Oh, I don't know whether to celebrate or to cry with you. Four girls. Pray for them. What are you celebrating? I passed my grade six trumpet exam with a merit. You passed your grade six trumpet exam with a merit. I look forward to seeing trumpets and I wish to see them sometime soon. Sylvie, what are you celebrating? Just another birthday. All right, good on you. Well done. Hey guys, what are you celebrating? 32 years of marriage and a birthday. 32 years of marriage and your birthday. Well, congratulations. And your new job. So, oh, far out. The blessing of the Lord falling down over this place. Eileen. I've got a new great-grandson and my daughter's come home from birth. Oh, fantastic. New great-grandson and daughter's here. That's awesome. Rip, what are you celebrating, mate? Just clocked over 21 years. Oh, nice. Well done. Good on you. What are you celebrating, Rip? My voice came off the gym. On Friday night. Your boys came to youth for the first time on Friday night. That's fantastic. Hey guys, hey, what are you celebrating? I just um, started school. Yeah, high five, buddy. Good job. Started school. Yeah, can't cheat. Go for it. Awesome, man. Shannon, what are you celebrating? Last Sunday, I went down to Auckland and came second. Came second in soccer. Oh, good job, mate. Well done. What are you celebrating? 16th birthday. Your sister's 16th birthday, right? You better hook her up with that crunchy, make sure it gets there. What are you celebrating? I get to go to a New Zealand swimming camp. New Zealand swimming camp? It's like a development camp. Oh, that's awesome. Well done. Congratulations. What are you celebrating? Um, I had my grade 5 swimming exam and I got the, the highest mark out of Northland. Yeah. Good looks and brainy. Wow. What are you celebrating? Um, just had my under 17 um, football comp tournament yesterday and we came first. Nice, man. There's some, some pretty amazing people in this church. Robin, what are you celebrating? Happy birthday for tomorrow. Grab a crunchy. Lee, what are you celebrating? Uh, about four weeks four weeks ago, uh, Pastor Obed's worship leader, Gideon Timar, was in a pretty bad car accident. Broke his neck, broke his back. He's walking. Wow. Praise the Lord. Yeah, well, so that's in Vanuatu. And... Uh, my lovely wife this summer, she's down the back rocking Rocky. It was our nine year wedding anniversary yesterday. Isn't that awesome? She put up with me for nine years. She married me, I had hair, no beard. 
The tables are flipped. She's still rocking in there. It's awesome. She did say to me yesterday, baby, the beard's got to go. But I think, I read this thing on the, on the net. said, if you shave your beard for a woman, you deserve neither. I didn't, I didn't write that. I'm just, I just read it. Just letting you know. Okay, while well, you're still laughing, <laughs> we're going to take up our offering now, so the team would like to get ready to take that up. Let me just pray uh, as we give this morning. Father, I thank you so much that you're an incredible, generous God, and that in you we seek first your kingdom and we lack nothing. And Father, I pray this morning for what we give, Lord, would you bless it, would you use it to further your kingdom in this city and in the nations of the world. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, let's go take that up. We've got some quick notices coming up. Uh, Free Cat Money Management course that starts tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Uh, it runs for three consecutive Mondays right here at the church. And so it'll help you give some great principles to getting financial freedom and breakthrough in your life. You can register this morning at the info area or you'll have to call the church tomorrow, which no, you won't know it'll be here. We're going to conference. So uh, you've got to register today at the info booth. That's your last last opportunity to get into that Cat Money Management course. Uh, it's going to be fantastic for you if you do that. Uh, we've got a brand new course starting. It's a boundaries course. Now, uh, many, of pe- many people struggle with boundaries in their life. There's a lot of people who are yes people. They say yes to everyone and everything, and they end up hurting themselves and wearing themselves out, and it's not a good thing. You know, God has boundaries for us, and so it's important that we learn to have boundaries for ourselves as well. So if you're a person that uh, would really like to get some good understanding of how to have good boundaries in your life, this is a course for you. Uh, go and sign up for the information booth that's starting on the 15th of October at 7 p.m., it's uh, nine weeks, and it costs $20 per person. That's for your little workbook, and it's a fantastic course. I know people have done this course and had incredible breakthrough. Like this course, of one lady, the lady who's running this, Jenny Baker, this has been the most life-changing course she's ever been on uh, in her Christian walk. So I really encourage you to do that. Uh, we're also looking for people, if you've got a heart for new Christians, maybe for discipleship and for growing uh, new believers, man, we, get, we don't have any trouble getting people saved in this church. People get saved all the time. And uh, But we want to pull a team of people together who are passionate for new Christians, who want to help people walk that journey and run some courses for them. So if you are interested in helping to develop some, uh, some stuff for our new Christians, we'd love to connect with you. Go see the info booth and sign your name up for that to join the new Christians team. That'll be fantastic. We are celebrating 200 years of Christianity in New Zealand. So... On the Sunday, the 12th of October at 6.30 p.m. right here, all the churches of Whangarei are coming together to celebrate this event. And uh, we've got a whole night planned with a whole lot of different stuff. It's going to be fantastic. We're just one partner and a host, so it's not necessarily us doing everything. All the churches are banding together. It's going to be a fantastic night. I encourage you to invite some friends right here at 6.30 p.m. Uh, on the t- Sunday, the 12th of October. It's going to be fantastic. God's Not Dead, we've got a great movie coming up, it's on Sunday the 19th of October at 7.30pm here, it's going to be done, we've got popcorn, we've got drinks, we've got lollies and chocolate and a whole lot of stuff, just like the movies, uh, we're going to be screening this movie, it's been going all around the world lately, and it's a fantastic movie for you and for your friends, so come on out, it's going to be $10 per person, but that's just a, uh, that all that's going to go towards our Christmas box uh, initiative to feed the hungry people in our city this Christmas. So make sure you're coming out and support that. It's going to be a great night out. If you need any more info, go see our website www.elamchristianseater.org.nz to uh, get any more info you need. Or you can get onto our Facebook page, like our Facebook page, or join our group. We'd love to connect with you that way as well. Oh, fantastic. We got through it. Well, we've got a, a, um, we're continuing on our new series, our House Rules series. It's been going great for the last two weeks. And we have an awesome man of God who's going to come bring the word this morning. I want you to give it up for Edward and Max Dare. Kia ora. We're on. All right, let's pray. Pono re kore kia koe e tuta tau atua. Mau tini manaki tanga tua roka nui kia tātou. Lord God, we thank you that you are here. We thank you that there's freedom in your name. We thank you for the message of the cross. We thank you that you never change. Lord, the great commission which you've called us to, that always remains the same. We ask, Lord, that you would, Lord, help us to continue to be more like you, Lord, to do what you want us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Kia ora, Lord.
Yeah, I'm Eddie Witter. Certainly a lot fairer than uh, many people might expect of someone with my name. But this is me. I was born in the deep south, so I'm a southern man. I was raised at the top of the south. And uh, we've been in Whangarei for over 17 years, so I'm both a great southern man and also a great northern Cody man, a Tanifa man. My, um, the Maxteads, they came into Port Chalmers in the 1880s on a settler ship and uh, settled in Otago and, and Southland. So my dad, the Maxted family, originate from England and they have uh, as their heritage English, of course, uh, Scottish and Welsh. And uh, my middle name is actually a clan name. And uh, our clan was known as, uh, as mercenaries. So that makes a great mix for my mum's whanau, which are Ngāpui and uh, uh, Bay of Plenty Iwi. So a, a lovely mix of uh, mercenaries and uh, what we might say is headhunters. <laughs> From the north. All right. So I grew up, um, I was born into a very traditional church into a Presbyterian church. I'm thankful to my nana and uh, those that went before that laid the foundation for our family. And, uh, and born into a very traditional church, I was actually christened uh, without my knowledge and uh, without even me making a decision. But uh, I've got the cup, the christening cup, to prove it. Um, so I'm thankful for my nana and that she raised my father in that uh, very traditional church. We moved to uh, Blenheim in the 70s. And uh, in Blenheim, we went along to the Elam Church there. So I, was, uh, I became quite accustomed to uh, the ways of Elam Churches and Pentecostal Churches that became the norm for me. And, you know, the way that we do things, uh, the way that we sing, the way that we pray, the way that the Word is preached, um, all those sorts of things. The church in Blenheim, it was a new build, it was a uh, new complex, it was a huge complex, and at that time it was a very flash, it was flash as. And, um, you know, that was great. It was awesome. You know, we used to tear up the place and all, all sorts of things. You have mischief, as you do when you're young. And so, you know, the Elam Church in Blenheim, and um, it being all flash and new, that's what I was accustomed to. That's what I grew up with. And so for me, those ways of doing things, that was the norm for me. You know, and as a young person growing up, um, you're always fed up. You always get a bit uh, frustrated, a bit ha with... Uh, you know, the place in which you grow up in, and you always think that it's uh, not good enough, too small. And so I left Blenheim and went down to uni, down to Dunedin, down to Otago University, and uh, trained down there as uh, in nutrition. I got a degree in nutrition and then also did dietitian training on top of that. And so, you know, I grew up um, in the Elam Church in Blenheim, and that's what became the norm. I was there for quite some time, all of my childhood. And then moved away, you know, once I finished, finished high school. And uh, once I finished my training in Dunedin, we, we came back. And um, came back to uh, the Elam Church there. And some things had changed, some things hadn't. You know, what had changed was that the new building, the new complex, that had changed from what it was to being flash, to being a wee bit tired, a wee bit old. It had exactly the same decor, the same furniture that I grew up with. And we're talking about 10, 15 years later. You know, that had all become old, the colour schemes, all those sorts of things. And for me, that was, wow, okay, that's what I grew up with and it's still the same. There were some things that didn't change and that puzzled me as well. It was a wee bit peculiar. And those things that didn't change were like, it seemed like the songs, you know, and just the way of doing things, it seemed like none of that actually changed. You know, I had changed as a person. You know, what I was used to and what I was comfortable with as a child. Um, you know, that was cool. I loved that. But then once I uh, went to university, came back and was in my mid-twenties, it just seemed like, to me, wow, that's not me. Um, you know, I couldn't quite relate to the way in which things were done, um, even though that's what I grew up with. And I think that can be quite common for us as churches. You know, we can often stick with something that works for a while and keep on rolling that through and not actually actually look at things or stand back and think, hmm, is that still working? Is that still good? Yeah. And, um, 
You know, I also remember um, looking back at a number of photos. I think it's probably selfies before they became selfies. Um, no, all sorts of photos, you know, photos of the family, photos of, uh, from school, um, all sorts of things, from right, right when I was a baby, right growing up through childhood, uh, through school, and then right until this present point. And what I can see is uh, a number of different haircuts and uh, a number of different uh, clothing stocks. Now, some of those weren't my own choice, of course. Um, some of those were uh, held down and given to me, but... Um, You know, that's uh, the way it is. But, um, you know, I had the bowl cut. Um, I had the helmet cut. Uh, Definitely not my own choice, but, um, you know, mum and her ways, uh, that's what she gave me. And um, I also had the mullet and uh, the mullet uh, hawk, the the mohawk. I had the uh, the crew cut, Um, you know, all the baldy. Um, I had all sorts of haircuts. So I even... um, had plants and all those sorts of things, um, all different styles. You know, although I look back and think, wow, what was happening during those times? And um, Martin was suggested that we might show someone. I just thought, oh, no way, man. <laughs> One thing I'm happy with is that, you know, I made an attempt through the years to um, stay hip, I suppose, or um, keep up with what was happening as a young person even though when we look back it doesn't seem so cool. You know, so with hairstyles and clothing styles, um, I'm glad that I did attempt to keep up with what was happening, even though now it's a bit embarrassing. But um, some of you will know my story as well, and that, um, you know, for quite a significant amount of time, I kept one hairstyle for perhaps way too long. And, um, you know, some of you know what I'm talking about, um, and I don't know who to blame, who's to blame. Maybe it's uh, those that are still with me. Maybe it's you guys that should have said and got along and said, hey, what's up there? you know? No, no, you can't blame someone else for your own doing. But um, I had a hairstyle, and that was real, real long hair for way too long. Now, I must have kept that hairstyle for perhaps uh, maybe 10, 10 or more years. Let's just keep it to 10. But, um, you know, I had really, really long hair. I used to chuck it into uh, thin plaits, fat plaits, you know, a, um, a ponytail. I used to have it up in a top knot and a mouldy comb or a bone hairdo, um, a hair comb in the back there, all sorts. But, um, you know, one day I just woke up and I thought, man, what's happening there? You know, and I just got my hair cut. And um, funny thing is, is that Marma and Te Rewa, um, all I wasn't around at the time, but um, they actually uh, didn't want me to change. But I was like, no way, I've had enough of this. I don't know why I kept here, um, my hair style like this for so long, but it's got to go, it just doesn't look good. But you know, it's just, you know, we can become quite easily accustomed to things like that and not even change, not even stand back and think, heck, what am I doing? You know? Um, so it's so easy for us, it's so easy for a church for us to just stick with the same old, same old, and not actually stand back and say, hey, are we actually relevant? Are we actually moving with the times? Or are we actually slightly peculiar, slightly unusual in the way that we do things? You know, some of us will remember Kodak, you know, and the Kodak moments. If you're uh, young enough to remember Kodak and what they used to be, um, not what they are now, but what they used to be, Kodak used to be all about films, processing. You know, you'd go up, you'd have your camera, you'd go and uh, buy your Kodak film, you'd take all your pictures, then you'd take it back to your Kodak shop and they'd process all your films or all your photos. Well, where is Kodak now? Kodak is a great example of a business that failed to change with the times. You know, and what's worse is that, you know, somebody put a proposal up to the senior management in, in Kodak to move from what was their core business. Now, they had 90% market share of what they were doing. So they, pretty much everything, you know, all we know is the Kodak moments. And when we think back about photos, that's all we remember is Kodak. But um, somebody put forward a proposal for them to change and to modernise to something completely different into what we now know as digital. Now, at that time, they were so comfortable and so secure in what they were doing that they didn't even recognise that there was a need to do that. And so that proposal wasn't even really properly considered. And, you know, where is Kodak now? Kodak ceases to exist. Kodak 
in fact became bankrupt because they were far too comfortable, far too accustomed to what they were doing and failed to recognise the time to change. <coughs> and sometimes, you know, as a church, we can quite often become irrelevant. If you know a wee bit about church history, you know, what we see right now in churches that is traditional, at some stage, if you look back far enough, was contemporary in its time. Yeah. Some of us will remember some of the good old songs of the 70s. You know, a lot of those songs were set to tunes that were the latest rock songs, you know. And at that time where they first come out, you know, the traditional churches at the time, they shunned those things and said that that wasn't of God, you know, that you couldn't sing, um, you know, those songs to a worldly tune. And think about it now, if we were to sing those songs right now, um, we would think, wow, well, that's really old. That's uh, slightly peculiar, um, a wee bit unusual, and um, is that really relevant for today? Now, what I need you to, to hear from me right now is, you know, let's just pause for a moment. We're not saying that we chuck out, you know, the baby with the bathwater. What I need you to hear is that the message, the message of the cross, you know, the message that we all need a saviour, the message that we've all messed up, you know, that we've all sinned, that still remains the same. The truths of the Bible, they still remain the same. And the Great Commission, that always remains the same. But if you know anything about the Great Commission, it says what we're, what we're out to do, but it doesn't say how we're to do that. You know, so the message always remains the same. You know, our foundations and our beliefs and our faith, they always remain the same. But the way that we deliver that message, the way that we package our God... The way that we wrap up that message and deliver it always must change. And if you know something about church history, you'll know that you know, it always changed to meet the needs of real people. It always changed to meet the need of a new generation. And so as a church, there's some things that we always will remain faithful to, and that is our message. But there's, we're always looking to change how we deliver that message. And in the Bible, in 1 Corinthians 9, verse 19 to 22, you know, there's a number of great examples in the Bible of um, people that went about, you know, they firmly stuck to the message, faithful to the message, but they changed all sorts of, they tried all different approaches in which to deliver that message. And one of the examples that I like is of Paul. Paul's a great example. Let's pick it up in 1 Corinthians 9, verses 19 to 22. Though I am free and belong to no one, I have made myself a slave to everyone, to win as many as possible. To the Jews I became like a Jew, to win the Jews. To those under the law I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law. So as to win those under the law. To those not having the law I became like one not having the law. Though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so as to win those not having the law. To the weak I become weak, to win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that by all possible means I might save some. You know, so if we consider what Paul's saying there, you know, he didn't worry about his likes and dislikes, his own personal preferences. He stuck firm to the message. You know, if you think back and consider Paul, Paul was a Jew, high born, highly educated, highly skilled, and an expert in those ways the rituals, the customs, the practices of the Jewish people. And that was what he was good at. But he chose to put those things aside in order to reach other people groups. You know, he chose to put what he was an expert in, what he was familiar with, what was the norm, what he grew up with and what he loved. He chose to put those things aside so that he could reach out and save some of, the, some of the Greek. But when he was with his own people, he behaved like his own people. Now, we're not saying that, you know, it's a licence to sin, just to, you know, as an excuse to go out and save people. That's not at all. What Paul did in his example is that he kept the rituals and the customs of the Jewish people. 
in order that he could save some of those Jewish people. But when he was with the Greek and different other ethnicities, he put that aside because that was unusual, that was peculiar to them. He spoke in their language. He didn't stick to the language that suited the Jewish people. So Paul became all things to all people so that by all possible means he might save some. You know, he put aside his personal preferences of likes and dislikes in order to save some. You know, and that's a great thing. You know, it's something that we need to learn from. Sticking firmly to the message, but packaging it in a way that will meet the real needs of real people. Very good. You need to know, house rule number three is be relevant. You know, in order for us to be effective in our purpose and being centres of hope to reach servant and influence, we need to be relevant to those around us. You know, to be a centre of hope, for people to see that we actually have hope, yeah. for us to be able to reach others, to, uh, for us to be, to be able to effectively reach and influence others, we have to be relevant in all that we do. So here's four simple, practical points. The first one is to be authentic and real. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I was quite challenged. Now, um, I was asked to go and you know, visit a whānau that lived up the road from us. And um, they won't mind me sharing this story. I won't say their names. But, um, you know, um, so I was asked to go up and see a whānau, go and talk to them. And I thought, man, how random is that? Yeah. And um, I didn't know them. I wasn't really sure what I might say, what they needed to know, or what they wanted to know. Um, I wasn't even, I didn't even know them. You know, I didn't think that I, I was thinking, well, will I have anything in common? What will I say? What will I do? Well, I just went up there and um, was myself authentic and real. So I, you know, um, I thought it was a random thing to do. I wasn't exactly comfortable in, in doing that. But just went up there and was myself. And, um, you know, it was, I had to meet with them on a, uh, it was a Thursday afternoon. And um, so that meant that I had to change my work schedule around and make up the hours elsewhere. But um, I went and talked to them about us, what we're into, you know, what God means to us, and um, answered all sorts of questions that they have. I chatted with them for quite a while about who they were, who I was, who we were, and um, all sorts of stuff just to try and connect with them and be, you know, authentic and real with them. Well, so that was Thursday on the Saturday um, you know, just being authentic and real, we had them round for a kai, we watched the rugby, and um, then that Sunday, they decided to come to church, and um, blow me away, they make a decision for God, all in those, uh, you know, in that short space of time, but, you know, what if I thought, man, that's far too random for me, um, that's something that I'm not necessarily comfortable with, I don't necessarily like doing that, um, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, you know, the key thing is to be authentic and real, try and connect with people just in a real and meaningful way. You know, I think if I wasn't authentic and real, um, where that couple might be, you know, and um, they're here today. And um, another thing is that, um, you know, I talked about what we do, what we're into, the way that we roll, the way that we do things. And um, do you know what? Because of their perception of the church, they still thought that they were coming to some old, small, uh, peculiar, unusual, irrelevant church. Until they came around the corner and, and saw the building and came in, and they were blown away as soon as they came in. So point number one is to be authentic and real. You know, just to connect with people and meet the needs of real people and their real needs. Number two is to say things on Sunday to help people on Monday. So this is the key focus of us and the way that we run our services, you know, to say things on Sunday to help people on Monday. We aim to be really practical, you know, for people that have been to church for years as well as, you know, people who are new to church. The concept that we use is from Andy Stanley, which is called Deep and Wide. So we're firmly focused on what it is that we believe in, you know, our foundations and, um, you know, encouraging people to make life change. You know, to become more like Jesus, whatever stage you are at. So deep and wide, deep in our foundations and our focus on what it is that we're commissioned to do, the Great Commission. But wide in our approach and our reach. You know, we want to be a church 
that new people, that unchurched people love to come to and love to get to know the God that we know. To put it, I suppose, in uh, more religious speak, which may suit some of you, um, you know, we are not a a seeker-focused or a seeker-sensitive church. You know, that's a small element of what we do. We aim to both reach, you know, churched people as well as the unchurched. We continually have, you know, um, people who have been to church for a number of years come and say to us that in the last couple of years, you know, with different messages that have been spoken about, that they have made more life change in the last couple of years than what they have, say, of being in church in 10 years. So we aim to say things on Sunday to help people on Monday. So that's not just about, you know, new people and assisting them in their journey and their relationship with God, but it's for each one of us. You know, if we're honest and if we're open to what the Holy Spirit is doing, you know, there will always be things that we need to improve on, always things that we need to change in order to develop and be more like Jesus. Number three is be excellent in all we do. Now, when we say be excellent in all we do, we're not talking about perfection. We're not talking about uh, striving. We're talking about just doing the best with what we've got. You know, it's okay to stuff up. It's okay to make a mistake. Just give it your best shot. You know, acknowledge our mistakes, you know, and look to do better. Be excellent in all we do. You know, that's in our welcoming and what we do in our life groups. You know, always encouraging. You know, it says that iron sharpens iron. So always encouraging, regardless of how long somebody has known God for. Always encouraging each other to make life change and being honest and real. And on an ongoing basis, at a staffing level, the staff are reviewing you know, how we're going and always looking to be excellent in all we do. You know, always looking to improve and look at better ways that we can do things. As a local leadership team, we have a survey that goes out you know, a couple of times a year and we review that, we have a look at that, we put in place plans and strategies in order to be better, in order to improve, in order to be excellent and you know, continually being excellent in all that we do. The last point that we have this morning is to be always learning. Now, some of you know that I work for the hospital and um, have worked for the hospital for over 17 years as a dietitian. In the nutrition and dietitian field, you know, it seems like every day there's some new study, new research um, coming out saying that this food is bad and this one is good, we can't eat this, we're we're best to eat that. Well, as a dietitian... Um, we're required to what's called um, maintain competency or you know, continuing competency. It's a concept called lifelong learning. And the reason for that is because in the nutrition and dietitian field, you know, things are always changing. And so we have to make sure that you know, when something new comes up, that we can critique that, we can break it down, we can pull out what might be for real and what we can incorporate into our practice. And making sure that we're learning, continuing to learn, continuing to upskill, and what we're saying to people is correct and right. And that's the same attitude that we need to take as a church. You know, on a day to day basis, um, on, on Sunday as well as right through the week, you know, wherever you may work, we always need to be learning and looking to upskill and improve on what we do. You know, it, it's in both um, what you're skilled to do. And also those things that you aren't skilled to do. You know, some of those things that aren't what you prefer to do. Some of those things that you don't necessarily like to do. You know, we need, as Paul says, all things to all people. So that by all possible means we might save some. Be authentic and real. You know, look to connect with people. And meet the real needs of real people. Say things on Sunday to help people on Monday. It's about being relevant. You know, not being seeker sensitive, but... Allowing, you know, the word that is spoken about, the message that we preach, to actually drop down from our head to our heart and, you know, to bring about life change in us, regardless of where we're at in our walk. Be excellent in all we do and be always learning. You know, Paul put aside his likes and dislikes. He put aside what was normal for him, what he was accustomed to, what he loved, all that he loved. He was, you know, high-born in that society, but he chose to put that aside in order to be all things to all people, that by all possible means he might save some. Just think for a moment, 
as a church if we were to do the opposite. If we weren't relevant. If we didn't look to be all things to all people so that by all possible means we might save some. What would be, what would be the result? The result is that we would actually lose. You know, failing to be relevant means that we actually lose. We save none. You know, in order to be effective as centres of hope, to reach servant influence, those around us, those that we come about, come across on a day-to-day basis, we need to be relevant as a church. All things to all people, so that by all possible means, we might save some. Let me pray just as I hand back to Steve. It's Yatsua, take on Lake Tato. Oh, Iwi. It's Yatsua, Mahi, oh, Mahi, Kirilti, oh, Tato, Kitifakoti, oh, here, here. We thank you, God, for who you are. We thank you, God, for what you've called us to as a church. We thank you, God, for your great commission. Lord, we ask that you would help us, Lord, to be relevant, Lord, to be effective as centres of hope, to reach, serve, and influence others. Lord, help us to put aside what is the norm, what we're accustomed to. Help us to be authentic and real. Help us to say things that are meaningful in order to reach out to others to save some. Help us, Lord, to be excellent and continually improving in what we do. Help us, Lord, to be continually learning. We thank you, God, that you are our firm foundation. We thank you, God, that in that great commission, you don't specify how we go about doing that. We thank you, God, for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We just thank you for an awesome work. Can I invite you all to stand this morning? I'd love to just do one more thing. This is what we always do before we finish the service. And, uh, you know, this, this stuff that we're talking about over these few weeks is just, it's a real core culture of who we are. And uh, I, I wanted you to preach that message because the, co- the culture of our church is not held in one person. It's held with all of us. And uh, it's just so true to who we are to be a relevant church, to be relevant to our community, to be relevant to our neighbours, to be relevant to our time and our culture and who we are and, and the time we are in, in, this, in the history of the world got to be relevant to the people around us. I just want to pray uh, as we close this morning. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, if you don't have a relationship with God, maybe we were praying for names and you're going, man, I wish someone's putting my name in that bucket. I want to give you an opportunity this morning to get your life right with God and come to know God in a meaningful and real way. You know, the Bible says that God loves you and God made you, but we all sin, we all mess up, and we fall short of God's glory. And the punishment for our sin is death. But when Jesus came, he died on that cross. And he took the punishment that you owed and I owed for our sin. And he offers us a free gift of grace and eternal life with him. We get to be reconciled with our Heavenly Father. And I want to pray a prayer this morning. And if you don't know God or you want to get your life right with God today, I'm going to invite you to pray this prayer in your heart as I pray it out loud. Everyone just close your eyes and bow your heads this morning. Just pray this along with me if you want to do this. Lord, I, I come to you today. And I know I'm a sinner. I know I've messed up and I've sinned. But I believe, Jesus, you died on that cross for me. I ask you today to forgive me my sin and come into my life and be the Lord and Savior of my life. I want to put my trust in you today. Come in, be my Lord and Savior, and make my life brand new today. I want to start a journey in relationship with you in Jesus' name. Just while everyone's got their eyes closed and their heads bowed, if you prayed that prayer this morning and you met that, you want to start a walk with God and Get your life right with God. You just Can I invite you to do something real brave? Would you just raise your hand nice and high right where you're standing? I'd love to be able to pray with you some more. Awesome. I see that hand just down there. That's great. Anyone else want to pray that? Just, yeah, awesome. I see that one down the back. That's cool. Yep, down the back over there too. That's cool. Anyone else? You prayed that prayer. You're like, yeah, Steve, I want to get my life right with God today. Just lift your hand nice and high. Fantastic. Fantastic. God, I thank you so much for lives that are truly changed. And God, I pray that for all of us as a church, Lord, we would 
uh, we would be a church that is relevant. And this isn't just held by those in leadership or those in serving roles. No, no, but all of us as a collective community would make the decision to be relevant in all that we do. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's just worship God for a few moments. your breath in our lungs, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. It's your service and uh, I want to encourage you to get yourself one of these invite cards. Take one of these. Uh, house rule number one was inviting people. So grab one of these cards They're in the cafe. There's a boy there all over the show. Grab one of these and invite somebody to come on church with you. I know they'll be blessed. We've got a prayer team down the front. If anything that's been spoken about today has just stirred your heart, you want some prayer, we've got a team down the front that would love to pray for you. Also, I want to welcome you if you're a guest this morning. Come and join us in our guest lounge for a free coffee and a muffin. We'd love to connect with you and hang out. Hey, if you are uh, in this church, you call this place home, but you're not serving yet, we've got a whole bunch of areas that we need new, uh, new serve team members in for the Sunday teams and the band and new teams and kids teams. I want to encourage you, go see the Connection Point table, which is just straight out the foyer. You'll see the big sign that says Connection Point. Go see them and sign yourself up for a team. We'd love to have you as a part of the team. Go out and buy a coffee for somebody. You're, you're going gonna, you're gonna to just get a time for the All Blacks kickoff. It's going to be fantastic. Not that you're all hanging out for it. You go, come on, Steve. Time's gone. Time's gone. But God bless you, church. We're going to be away this week at National Conference. If you're there with us, we'd love to see you there. We're looking forward to hanging out with you. Go have an awesome week. Go be sent as a hope to reach seven influence our city. God bless you. We'll see you next week. I'll be in the camp.